G'day. Doing a teardown on uh, this uh, network switch. Uh, the building this came out of uh, suffered a bit of lightning damage and uh, between this and one PC, um, pretty much out of their entire thing, the one computer lost a network port and this switch was dead. Uh, upon arrival, uh, I checked it and the power supply that fed this had failed uh, so I connected up an older uh, linear power supply to it uh, had it running for about two or three minutes and then the network had dropped out uh, and then when I felt this it was running extremely hot and the lights were out so I'm assuming it suffered some sort of major damage so I thought I'll pull it apart and we'll have a look and see what I'll see if there's any signs inside it as to why it's gone the way it has. It's quite possibly it's just gone and had a silent death. But uh, I did notice it was running exceptionally hot. Um, it might explain why the uh, original power supply that was connected to it had failed. Uh, it probably overloaded too long and just gave out. Um, linear power supplies are a bit more forgiving for crappy loads um, or, lo or running things that have actually been damaged or shorted out. But yeah. So, we've got our device here. Let's see if I can free this board. So, that might explain where the heat was coming from. Though this was only running, oh, what is it, four computers. Yeah, four computers and a uh, printer pretty much running off of this so, and the load this gets is pre pretty much a file server to probably about 100 megs worth of data it's not a lot um, it's from a small law firm so the data they have is pretty minuscule it's all text based stuff but so it wouldn't have been the load on it that was causing it to overheat but, See what's going on. It's a pretty standard arrangement. I mean, there's nothing special on here. I'm just having a look. There's nothing actually. Oh, hold on. You have a look down here where that heat sink is. That's gone a bit brown. Let's see if we can lift that off. This thing doesn't work anymore. Um, I'm not going to try and resuscitate it. Uh, pretty much just going to pull it apart and then it goes in the bin pretty much. So, see what happens. See, I, think, I thought um, network ports are supposed to be fully isolated from the device. So, it's kind of, kind of a bit amazing that you'd actually get damage to the IC in this unless it's inductively coupled when it when it hit um, from what I can gather the building didn't actually get uh, a direct hit uh, I believe the building next door or the residence next door is a bit of a ham or a radio nut so he's got some relatively big uh, he's got a big um, twin pole um, long wire antenna, sort of like a, a large AM antenna, a radio antenna in the backyard and where the pole, one of the support poles for it is, is on the, uh, the same corner of the building where the computer that this was connected to had actually failed. Right, so we got that off. That's actually gotten quite hot. Uh, pull it apart a bit more. I'm going to scrape some of this off. I'll chisel it off anyway. <laughs> EV blog ruler. Not just a ruler. Very, very handy for all sorts of silly things. I actually use this when I'm designing my little 3D, 3D printed projects. 
unlike unlike your standard school rules, this thing actually the edge of it actually starts at zero, so very handy. A bit. A bit sus. Not seeing any real damage. Although you can see from the discoloration here, it's gotten quite hot. So, kind of tempted to plug it back in, but I haven't got, I haven't got quite a uh, strong enough power supply. Actually, I might grab that um, the linear supply. This is the linear supply I was running it on, um, which was running with for a short period of time before it stopped. See, it's a proper decent size. Right, let's put him in the wall. Now, plugged into this mode and that supply works, so let's plug it into here and see what happens. I'm expecting this to just get stupidly hot, so see what happens. So yeah, lights are on. That chip is getting exceptionally hot right now. <laughs> See if we can get flames out of it or something, I don't know. Alright, that's getting very, very hot. Oh wow. Okay, that that chip's dead. Or failing anyway. It's kind of weird though because it does, I mean for a brief period of time, it does light up. So the, you can see the power light's actually on there. I think as it gets hot, it just stops. So, but that chip's getting ridiculously hot. It's running a. It's like it's running a switching arrangement here. So it's quite possible that the switching part here is running too high <coughs> voltage to it, or something like that. Interesting to try and power this up with a uh, multimeter in line just to see what's going on, but I haven't got the leads to do so unfortunately. But yeah, so not a lot going on there except the fact that that processor chip gets ridiculously hot. I mean that was only plugged in for about 5-10 seconds or something like that and that accelerated from pretty much cool room temperature which is about 18-20 degrees up to a good 70 80 degrees before I've unplugged it so it, it's burning a pretty full-on amount of power just as heat at the moment so it's probably where our issue is um, yeah shame it doesn't really show us too much but uh, that's where our drama is and this is the heat sink paste residue that's left over you can see by the color of this, it's actually gotten pretty warm. Now this stuff's usually a silicon based uh, product. Um, usually to get discoloration like this, you would have ha you would have to be pushing 200, 150 to 200 degrees um, for a, a period of time for, the, for you to get that sort of coloring. Because um, that's actually burnt. So, I dare say she's been a bit warm for a little while. Anyway, thanks for watching.